What up Biscuits? It's your boy, Biscuit Benny, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a Fender Eliminator kit and an integrated taillight on the 2017 to 2020 CBR 1000 RR. I got the Hot Bodies Racing Fender Eliminator kit because it's ABS plastic and it's lightweight, and I also got the Moto Dynamics integrated taillight for the CBR 1000 RR because it looks sick. You'll see it in this video. Check it out. So as usual, we're gonna start with an unboxing of some of these products. The first one is the Moto Dynamics Integrated Tail Light for the CBR1000 RR 2017 to 2020. This one is called the Tinted or Smoke, and honestly, it's pretty hard to see the tinting at all. I don't really like that super darked out tint look, so this worked out just perfectly. A harness that fits right into the OEM wiring harness, and we've also got these two turn signal harnesses. Next up, is this Hot Bodies Fender Eliminator Kit. There's really nothing to unbox because of the packaging. You can clearly see what's in there. That has an integrated license plate light. Let's go install these things. So the first thing that I would recommend is, again, like in the last video, setting out a soft workspace. This will obviously help you uh, when you take off the fairings to not scratch or damage the fairings. I know I keep harping on about that on this channel, but you know, these fairings are expensive, so you should take care of them. So in order to install the Fender Eliminator Kit and the integrated tail light, you'll need a couple of basic tools, and I think just about anyone should be able to do this. You'll need to start with a 3mm hex bit, you'll need a 5mm hex bit, you'll need a Phillips bit. It's a good idea to have a, a ratchet of some sort and a 10mm socket. You'll also want to have a 10mm wrench. I also recommend having some pliers because we'll have to do some crimping and just in case you lose a screw in the fairings, it's easy to fish it out with this. A flat head screwdriver to help you remove some of the nylon rivets. Diagonal cutters for some of the wiring that we'll have to do. It's very minor so don't let this scare you. And a pick of some sort. First step is to remove the passenger seat. Set this somewhere safe. Then we need to remove the main rider seat. That's what requires the five millimeter hex bit. So what you have to do is you gotta actually lift up the back of the seat and it exposes the bolt that you need. Then you remove the second seat bolt on the other side. Be sure to grab the washer that comes with it. Then the seat just pulls up and back, and then you take the seat off. And then we'll switch over to our three millimeter hex, and we'll remove this plate here. This is the shroud that holds on the tail light. In order to free this shroud, it's actually attached at several points. You can see to this bit of fairing, that bit of fairing, the tail light itself, and then it's sandwiched underneath this fairing. So it's a little tricky to get out. What I'd recommend doing is pushing in right here on this bit of fairing and then up on this main bit of fairing. So you hear it pop like that. And then you do the same thing on the other side. And once that's loose, you should be able to pull this bit of fairing off. And then out comes the shroud. Now keep this somewhere safe as well. Next, we'll go back to our three millimeter hex and we'll remove these two screws. Then we will switch to a Phillips bit and remove these plastic snap rivets. Sometimes these are very disagreeable and it's actually really hard to get them out. If I run into that problem, I'll show you how to use the flathead screwdriver to help you get those out. Like I said, sometimes you need the flathead. Just get it under there and pull up on it and remove the plastic snap rivet. And do the same on the other side. Then you should be able to get the rest of this fairing loose. And then that whole top fairing comes loose. Next, We'll want to remove this bracket. If you watch some other tutorials, they'll show you how to do this without removing this bracket. But I've tried it and it makes your life a lot easier if you just remove this lock bracket altogether. So you need a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet to do that. Just break those loose. And then they should be simple enough to just remove by hand. And 
And then this piece rotates up like this and then slides right out. So next off, to get this bottom fairing out, we'll need to remove these two screws right here and right there. We'll need to remove these two screws way down in there. And that's why we, we removed the lock bracket. And then we'll need to remove these two screws and that should help you pop off this bottom fairing. The next step then is to get this bit of fairing off. So first you have to undo this latch here, pop this one out, get that latch to come off, then come over to the other side and do the same thing. And then that should just slide back. Then we come to the bottom of the bike with a Phillips bit and we need to remove these two snap rivets. So same thing that I showed you on the top. And here we go. This is the, the bottom protective shroud. And now comes the fun bit. We're gonna remove this tail light. That takes a Phillips screwdriver bit. Be sure to hold the light so that it doesn't fall. Then we take this clip out by pressing down on this detent and popping it out. And there we go. This is the OEM tail light. You can keep this or sell it on eBay. It's your choice. So next up, we'll need to remove a bunch of these wiring connections so that we can take off the fender. So first pop off your license plate light. This is the turn signal uh, group. So what you can do is take this whole rubber thing off of its mount so you can easily access it. And then you can use either a pick or a, flat, a tiny flathead screwdriver and get in here and release these clips. You just go underneath that clip and pull, and then out it comes. So again, pull up on that clip and pull back. Now all of your electrical connections to the fender are disconnected. So next you'll need a 10 millimeter wrench and a 10 millimeter socket to get the fender off. What I would do is take your 10 millimeter wrench and hold the head of the bolt on the inside while you then bring the socket to the outside and break those loose. And then do the same on the other side. You can actually undo these just by hand. So remove those nuts that are holding these bolts on. Do the same on the other side. Then you can press out these bolts, but be sure to hang on to your fender because it will just fall once you pull these out. And once you've removed all of those bolts, everything should just come free. Stock fender, as large and disgusting as it is, has finally been removed. So in order to not have to cut any wires on your bike itself and to leave the electrical systems as untouched as you can, I would take the stock fender and cut the license plate connector wires right here so that that way you can attach this bit to the license plate light on your fender eliminator kit. And this will probably be the same for most fender eliminator kits. You can plug this connector back into the license plate light connector on the bike. Again, this prevents you from having to do any cutting of wires on the bike itself. So we're gonna start by pulling the sheath back to give us as much wire as possible. And you can just take some diagonal cutters and just Cut the wires. Now, you could use wire strippers and that's what I would recommend. I actually was unable to find my wire strippers in my garage, so I'm gonna be doing it the sort of jank way, which is to just gently take your diagonal cutters and press lightly into the sheath around the wire all the way around. Try not to cut the wires, obviously. You're just trying to get the sheath off. And there you go, both of the wires are exposed. Now to keep them from fraying, I would recommend also twisting them like this. This is a pretty standard electrical procedure. And there we go. We've got the factory electrical license plate light connector ready for crimping. If you're holding the connector like this, this side is ground and that side is power. So when you're wiring up your LED lights to this, just be sure you get that right because remember, LEDs only work in one direction for power. First thing to do is to grab the black lead or the ground lead for this license plate light and your crimp. 
and insert the wire into the crimp. And then you can take some pliers and smash that sucker down. And then you can take the brown lead, which is ground, and stick it into the other end of the crimp, like so, and crimp it down. And then you can test it by just lightly pulling on it. Just make sure the wires don't come out. If they don't come out when you pull on it like this, they probably won't come out while you're riding. Do the same thing for the power side, so white to green. If you want at this point, you can give it a quick test once you plug it all back in to see if you did the wiring correctly. Looks like we got it. So the license plate bracket will sit like this in your bike. So you take the connector that we just wired, drape it over to this side since it will connect up into the bike right here, and you can loosely place it into the bike. Start by taking your bolts and then feeding them through the inside to line things up. Hold the bolt with your finger and turn the nut onto the bolt. And at this point, you can get the wiring out of the way by just simply connecting it to the license plate connector. So like we did in reverse, grab your 10 millimeter wrench to hold the bolts on the inside. Take a 10 millimeter socket on the Titan setting and torque these things down. And now for the fun part, we're gonna install the integrated tail light. On the left side, you can see the OEM tail light. And on the right side, you see the Moto Dynamics integrated tail light. Now you can kind of see that it smoked a little bit, but it will look awesome on the matte black. So next we're gonna install the integrated tail light so that we don't put stress on these wires by plugging it in and letting it dangle. In order to install the integrated tail lights, you'll actually need to take the OEM tail light and take these metal threads off of those uh, inserts and then put them onto the integrated tail light. Then you can drop those two Phillips head screws in that mount the tail light into those holes and mount the light. Then you can go ahead and plug in the main light. Then you'll need to get inside the bag and find this turn signal wiring harness. So you can start by plugging in the blue line to the blue wire and the yellow line to this yellow wire. And then put the blue wire into the blue side and the yellow wire into the orange side. Then you can take this turn signal box and mount it back onto the bracket so that it stays stable. So in order to put the fairings all back on, do what we did to take it off just completely in reverse. So now the project is complete and you can see how much nicer the lines are on this bike. We don't have that nasty fender hanging off the back. The lines are a lot cleaner and the bike is a lot more aesthetically appealing. I think fender eliminators and integrated taillights are some of the easiest and quickest mods you can do to make your bike look crisp and fresh. Well, there you guys go. There's the install of a fender eliminator kit and an integrated taillight on the 2017 to 2020 Honda CBR 1000 RR. I hope you guys found this video informational and helpful. It's a pretty simple and quick mod to do that really improves the aesthetics of your bike and makes the thing look so much better. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll get to them as soon as I can. This has been another Biscuit Benny tutorial on the CBR 1000 RR. And with that, peace.